and all of a sudden it's just it just doesn't work and i'm like well i spent all that money and this thing that i spent all this money for isn't working right now what do i do now you just just feel bad you feel like that tv box in the corner there empty If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified when the next video gets released. I got a ton of cool content coming out and I will be reviewing some TV soon. So just let me know which ones you would like me to check out down in the comments below. All right, so there's this thing that's been kicking around in my head for the past couple of weeks and I just wanna share it with you guys. And trust me, believe me, I know, you guys know, I like to buy stuff. And I know there's plenty of you out there that love to buy stuff too. And when it comes to these next gen consoles, you know, whether you're buying the Xbox Series X or the PS5 or both, there are some things you need to know before you upgrade your TV and or your AV receiver. So there's a lot of new gear that's out that's 8K supporting, which, you know, obviously we're not gonna be using too much 8K, but 4K 120, that's what we're talking about, 4K. 120 frames per second. Now there's a lot of people that got pretty offended about the PS5 video I made about, you know, are we getting 120 frames per second in 4K? And chances are that's not happening, okay? So this is why I want you guys to just chill out. 4K, 120 frames per second, probably not happening this year. Next year, maybe, maybe midway next year, maybe in two years, because the developers still have to utilize all that power and what's funny is that i was looking at the video card that i bought for my you know my editing machine here and it also has 12 teraflops of processing which is what they are using in the xbox series x i thought that was kind of funny but anyway bottom line is you should save your money and you should just wait now you're probably going to get a better deal in march of next year on a TV that's released this year. And there's a lot of stuff going on with these TVs. If you're all about that HDMI 2.1, LG might be the brand to go with. So let me break down why I think you guys should just wait, okay? Samsung went ahead and I don't know what is up with the pricing on these things, but the Q90T, which was you know thousands of dollars last year, well, the Q90R was thousands of dollars last year, but this year you can get uh, 55 inch Q90T for $1,500, which is actually more of the, you know, mid to high end budget. But, you know, before, like last year, that would have been at least $2,000. So they definitely wanted to push more of their 8K TVs as opposed to their 4K TVs. So you can get a pretty decent, you know, Samsung for a good price right now. I put some links down in the description for you guys to check that out. And in the same token, you know, an LG 55 inch C10 is $1,700. So they're kind of like right there price point wise. Now, one big difference between the Samsung and the LG is that the Samsung will only have one HDMI 2.1 input. Whereas the LG, if it's an OLED, it'll have four HDMI 2.1 inputs. And if you are going to buy both consoles or just the one, if you're gonna buy one console, then you're probably better off with the Samsung. But if you want more, then you're probably better off with a LG. So it really depends. Are you going to buy the one console? Then yeah, Samsung and LG are up for grabs there. But if you're going to buy two consoles, then you're probably going to lean to the LG. Now, of course, you could be like, well, I have the one input. You know, I can get an AV receiver. But even the new Denons and the Marantzes are only having one 8K port which is gonna be you know, your 4K 120 port. So it's kind of a weird situation that we find ourselves in if you're shopping for a TV or AVR or if you just want a next gen console, you know, that's what I'm saying, just wait. So it looks like Sony went ahead and gave HDMI 2.1 ports only to two TVs. One is the 8K A8H and the other is the X900H, which is really odd. Now, if we look at this chart from Flat Panels HD, we see that Sony really just went balls to the wall trying to give the X900H the more game-friendly panel or TV this year. So you can actually get one pretty cheap right now 
and I believe the HDMI 2.1 ports out of the four, you only get two of those, and that's gonna be HDMI 3 and HDMI 4. So make sure if you're going to buy two consoles and connect them directly to the TV, because that's probably what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna look at either an LG or a Sony. So this is what I'm saying, guys. I think everybody should just wait. Just wait and see what happens. And then in fall, Vizio is putting out a gaming OLED. What's that gonna mean? So I think the best bet for everyone out there is not to figure out what TV they're going to upgrade for 4K 120 gaming because A, we're not gonna get 4K 120 gaming off the bat, meaning it's not happening by November, December this year. It's not. It's not, hands down. And you can argue with me in the comments if you like, I bring it on. Remember when the Xbox One X came out? It was supposedly gonna be 4K 60 frames per second, but everything came out 4K 30. And since its release, we still barely are scraping, like I, I see 57, 58, we're getting close to 60 frames per second, but that's just not a reality. Just like 4K 120 gaming is not a reality in 2020 with these new next gen consoles. That's just the that's just the way it goes. There's too much processing power that they got to do especially when we add ray tracing into the mix. Like there's no way they can do that. Now, chances are a lot of the, you know, premium games, AAA games, what are their A++++, I don't know what they call it, but it, those games are probably gonna come in at 4K 60 for sure. Which means if you have a 4K TV, you probably already have support for that. Your AVR already has support for that. So again, don't just spend your money to just spend it. I'm sure you could save it or spend it on something else instead of something that you're gonna be like, man, I shouldn't have bought that TV in 2020. I should have waited like six to eight more months. And that's all I'm saying. Now, for those who have been with the channel for a while, you guys know I review TVs and I'm sure you're probably like, hey, it's June. How come he hasn't reviewed a TV yet? That's because I'm waiting on a couple of things to happen. A, I want the prices to drop. And B, I really don't think there's that much difference between the TVs right now. Of course, you know, gaming wise, LG just announced they're gonna have FreeSync, you know, via a firmware update. And Samsung also has FreeSync support. Sony does not have FreeSync support, but they do have VRR on their X900H. So, you know, it's kind of like halfway there. Like these are all the features that you want, but do you want like a Samsung that has all the features you want, but only one HDMI 2.1 port or LG kind of having what you want, but you don't want to buy an OLED because you're worried about static images from video games on the screen all the time. There's a lot to consider. So jumping into a brand new TV just because you're getting a new console, probably not the best thing to do. And when we're talking about AV receivers, it's kind of the same thing. Like this is the best time to upgrade if you have an AV receiver that's like three to five years old and you probably want some more of the bells and whistles. Maybe you want IMAX enhanced. Maybe you just, just want 4K and HDR pass through because your previous AV receiver didn't have that. Well, you can get the 2019 models for less now that the 2020 models are released and they're shipping. So definitely think about what it is you're going to need. And since these consoles still aren't out, I'm telling you guys, the best thing to do is just wait. Just wait. I know we want to all jump on that hype train. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. I love buying stuff. You know, I'm all hyped up about it. But let's be real. Let's take a little dose of reality. Those games coming out this year are not going to be coming out in 4K 120 frames per second. It's just, it's just not happening. If they are. 120 frames per second, they're not gonna be 4K, 120 frames per second. So are you going to need HDMI 2.1 ports on your TV? Chances are that's a big fat no. <laughs> no. If you want to buy a TV for your next gen console, that is all up to you. Totally can do it. But as far as first adopters go, you know the caveat that you're going to jump into. You might actually not like the TV in six to eight months and be like, crap, shouldn't have bought that TV. It's all up in the air when you're an early adopter, so that's really on you. And if it works out, cool. If it doesn't, that's when it's gonna suck. So what is the best strategy? The best strategy is just to wait. 
I mean, the Samsung Q60T and the smaller 48 inch uh, Q80T will not support 4K 120. So there's a lot of different little things that you gotta look at when you're trying to figure out which TV you should buy for the next gen consoles. I mean, if it were me, I would just get an LG OLED and call it a day. I like OLEDs, but you know, it depends on your viewing environment. I mean, you got a lot of windows, a lot of ambient light. OLED might not be the best way to go. Might be better to get a Samsung LED. But you know, if you watch movies or anything, do you want Dolby Vision? So then that's another thing you gotta think about as well. Like what formats of HDR do you want in your TV? Again, there are a lot of variables to try and pick a TV. And I think if you're wanting to pick a TV just for a gaming console, honestly, I think you should just wait. I think you should just wait, you know, and I know, I, you know, I get tempted to like pull the trigger on a whole bunch of different stuff, but gotta, gotta, gotta calm it down. Gotta let it chill out. Uh, best thing to do is to have a few TVs in mind and say if one of them comes up Black Friday where there's some smoking ass deal, then you're, you know, you go for it, you know, whatever. But make sure you do your homework so you know what you're getting and definitely subscribing and being a part of my community here on YouTube, definitely part of it. So on that note, I do have a question for you guys. Which TVs would you like me to review? I'm not huge on the 8K stuff. I can easily get an 8K TV to come in. I think like the 55 inch ones are like, you know, $2,500 or something like that, something ridiculous. But if that's what you want, let me know down in the comments below what TVs you guys are interested in and what TVs you would like to see me review because uh, I will start getting those in in the coming months leading up to Black Friday. Anyway, like I said, I would wait for any of these upgrades, unless you're upgrading from something that's super, super old, and this is just the time to upgrade. Like, it's been six years and you want a new TV. Cool. It's been like four to six years on your AVR. You want something that's got 4K HDR pass-through. Cool. If it's just about next-gen consoles, I would say wait. That's gonna be the best option. And when you wait, you know, six, eight months, the prices are gonna drop even more. So it's eventually going to save you money. And of course, save you less heartache because I bought things and just been like, oh man, this is the coolest, coolest, coolest new hot shit. And all of a sudden it's just, it just doesn't work. And I'm like, well, I spent all that money. And this thing that I spent all this money for isn't working right. Now what do I do? Now you just, just feel bad. You feel like that TV box in the corner there, empty. All right, anyway, if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below and or on social or email, whichever you like to use. If you like this video, go ahead, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad and I'll see you next time.